Hi, it's Michaela from Pretty Neat Planet. I have a story today about one of the most popular insects in the United States. It's so popular, in fact, that it is the state insect of seven different states. Insects usually aren't that well liked, but thankfully for the monarch, it's beautiful, colorful, and it can't bite people due to its mouth parts. So I think it would likely win the insect popularity contest for the U.S. One day this fall, I volunteered at a local nature reserve. They were catching and tagging monarch butterflies. It would have been a really fun day for me since I love catching butterflies, but our group wasn't able to find a single monarch. Um, and it's not just here in Wisconsin. The monarch population is declining throughout their entire range. So what's going on? Well, to ask why the monarch butterflies are getting harder to find, you need to know the basics of their life cycles. Most people know that butterfly eggs hatch into caterpillars. Caterpillars are very, very hungry, and they eat plants, except for the 1% that are actually carnivorous. Then the caterpillars enter the pupa stage of their lifestyle, where they transform into a butterfly inside of a cocoon and emerge as adults. One interesting thing about the monarch, and several other butterflies, is that monarchs only eat a certain kind of plant. Monarchs only lay their eggs on the milkweed plant. When they eat milkweed as caterpillars, they absorb its toxins and become poisonous themselves, which is a great defense against the birds who will learn to avoid to eat them. Much of the decline in the monarch population over the past couple decades can be explained by the fact that since we have been developing land in the U.S., it's getting harder and harder for monarchs to find their milkweed. Another thing I find interesting about the monarch butterfly is that it is the only insect that migrates long distances every year in North America, kind of like many birds are known to do. They can migrate as far north as southern Canada all the way to Michoacan, Mexico, in the eastern parts of North America, and, and in southern California in the western part of North America. So there's actually a mountain range that separates the two populations. So we have eastern monarchs and western monarchs. The migration actually takes several generations, meaning that no single insect can complete the journey on its own. Because of this unique adaptation, if there's an extreme weather event in one part of the country, it can really hurt the entire population throughout the country. So for instance, in 2012, there was a severe drought in the western part of the United States. And just because in that one part there was really bad weather, it made it difficult for the butterflies to reproduce and survive throughout their entire range. But don't worry, the monarch butterfly isn't in peril, or it's definitely not on the verge of becoming endangered. It's still a really abundant insect. But I do still think it's something worth paying attention to. I wonder, as the climate continues to change in the future, how the monarch butterfly will fare. One thing I'm planning on doing next spring to help out the monarch butterflies is to plant milkweed seeds so they can have an easier time of finding their host plant. This is what the milkweed plant will look like in the fall. In the summer, a butterfly will lay its eggs on one of the milkweed leaves. And as the plant gets older, like in the fall, it will have these seed pods. And once it gets to like late fall, um, they'll actually crack open. And these really like milky seeds will be dispersed by the wind. So if you're interested in planting it, all you have to do is find these pods. Um, they actually grow really freely in ditches or in parks. And just spread the milkweed seed over where you want them to grow.